here's a short video about R squared in statistics, specifically in uh, linear regression problems. Uh, there's a slogan for R squared, which is really important, which uh, is one of its meanings is that it's a measure of the amount of variation in the data explained by the least squares linear model. And that's a little vague, and that explained by sounds like, is that really precise? Is that something that we can pin down? And in fact, it is actually a very precise statement. Um, and I just want to show you an example kind of dynamically to illustrate what's going on with that. So what I've got I over here in Fathom is eight X values and eight Y values, and they're plotted here. Um, and I've got the least squares line. So here's the least squares regression line. And um, I want to show you what it means to say that this model um, explains a certain amount of the variation of this data. So here's the here's some of the um, important figures. I've got here in the summary stats, it's a little bit tricky to see it on uh, Fathom, but the key numbers are x, the standard deviation is 1, and y, the standard deviation is 3. Um, so the standard deviation of x is 1, and the standard deviation of y is 3. And the um, r value turns out, uh, I don't have it up here, but I copied it over here. The little r is turns out to be 0.158. And so r squared is about 0.025. It's a pretty small r value. It's a very small r squared. And that's corresponding to the fact that I don't think anybody would look at this and say, wow, they're off obviously clustered near the line. There's not really any one line that they're clustered near. This is the best fit for this guy, but it's a small correlation. There's not much of a trend, a linear trend here. And it's gonna be, it's more dramatic when we have that kind of situation. So it turns out that when we want to explain this measure and think about R squared, the word variation here is really in the technical sense of the variance. So remember, we often talk about the spread of a distribution of numbers by the standard deviation, but there's the last step in calculating the standard deviation is to take a square root. Well, if you don't take the square root, you get the variance. And so I'm just denoting that, the variance of the y values as sy squared. And this is roughly very close to 3. Let's just call it 3. And so the variance of the y values is 9. So again, that's a, a slightly different measure from standard deviation, but it still measures uh, how spread out those are. And what the r squared me measures, the r squared is 0.025 or 2.5%. What it means is simply that the predicted, oh, that has a t in it, the predicted values of y, um, that's values lying on the line, should have 2.5%, which is 1 40th of the variance of the actual y values. Okay, so what should that be? Uh, 0.025 times 9 is 0.225. So these have a variance of 9, that's 3 squared. We should have a much, much smaller variance of the y hat values, and that should be 0.225. And I want to show you that that's really true. So what all I'm going to do is I'm going to actually take these dots and I'm going to, going to slide them into place on the line. Remember with the regression where y is the explanatory variable and y, or sorry, x is the explanatory variable and y is the response, the x values are sacred. We never ever change those. But we want to compare for this x value, and this x value would be 1.5-ish. I want to compare the real y value with what the prediction is from the linear model. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to replace it. I'm going to say, imagine that we actually replace this guy. I'm going to keep the x value just about the same. Try not to drag it too much. And I'm going to put it back on the line. And I'm going to do that with all of the x's. This is x equals 2. I'm going to slide it into place. The x values are changing a little bit because I'm doing it by hand. And I'm going to try and slide these guys as close to the line as I can graphically. So in each case, I'm taking the reality and I'm replacing it with the prediction. We know that's not, that's going to change things. That's not going to be exactly the real thing. But what I want to compare is how much variation in the se technical sense of this measure variance that these new data points have. These guys are much less variable. If the data points really did lie on a line, there's a lot less variation in these values. Okay, we can't do it exactly, but it should be pretty good. That was 4.2 for x. Okay, so now I have a new data set. These are the y hat values for the, for the given x. So if I look at all the, the y hats, what the model would predict 
for the x that I have, they are much, much more clustered than that big spread that we had before. Now, this is still recording right here. It's recording the variance. And that is just about, so that's s sub y hat, let me put a little hat on that, squared. Oops. Okay, the s is 0.475 about. And I'm going to square that. And guess what? Ooh, it's just about 0.225. Okay, that's 0.225. So if so here's one way to think about it. You take your real data and you if you imagine replacing them with the fake predicted data, that's going to spread out a lot less in the y direction. How much variance are they still going to have? Well, they're going to have less and you're going to be destroying more and more variance depending on how far they were from the line in the first place. These guys were really spread out. They weren't really on a line at all. I had to destroy a lot of the, the genuine wiggliness of those data points in the y direction by gluing them all to the line and replacing them with their y hats. And when I did that, guess what? I got a much smaller variance, a much smaller standard deviation as well. Instead of a standard deviation of 3, it's down to a half. I'm measuring it because of the way the r squared works. I'm measuring it by the square of the standard deviation. That went from 9 down to a much, much smaller value, less than 1 fourth. Um, and so that's, that example shows the technical specific meaning of what this means, the measure of the amount of variation explained by the linear, least squares linear model. It says that if you take the actual variance of the real data values and you multiply it by r squared, then you'll get what the variance would be if we replace the real data with the fictional prediction, predicted data. Now, if they had already been exactly on a line, I wouldn't have had to move them, and r squared would be 100%. I would I'd get exactly 100% of the real honest to God variance. But in this case, it was very dramatically different. One thing you might be asking, why does r squared here appear and the variance, like the s y squared and the s y hat squared, why can't I just use little r and the standard deviation, since that's what we typically use as a measure of spread? Well, it turns out that it just doesn't work. It doesn't work out it's in a simple way okay this idea of just taking the variance and multiplying it by this number it really wouldn't work as well um, if I didn't use the squares and in fact I'll just tell you I'm not gonna make not put, gonna put this in this video it secretly can be thought of as the Pythagorean theorem there's sort of a weird cool geometric interpretation of all this where secretly the reason the squares come in is really the same reason you have squares in Pythagoras. I'll just leave that as a tease for now. The main thing is this picture I want you to have of gluing points to the line. I'm going to put back all that variance now. I'm just undoing all the moves that I did, just doing control Z to undo. And you, as I do that, you can see the standard deviation increasing and getting back to its original value of 3. And so that's um, what's happened. Gluing them reduces the variance and putting them back in their real value gives a lot more variance that just isn't explained by the linear model.